Okay, now is there any possibility to analyze this using some one dimension? So, it is a predominantly one dimensional movement of the flame, correct. So, easily we can try to uh, do some one dimensional analysis and understand what are the important factors here, okay. So, that is what uh, we will try to attempt now. So, for, for the uh, problem what we have shown here, here you can see that the uh, unburned gas approaches the flame and uh, burned gas leaves the flame. So, it may be detonation anything, so please understand we are trying to solve for both. So, conservations of mass, momentum, energy and the equation of state are given here. Conservation of mass, momentum, energy and the equation of state. What is mass conservation? Per unit area of the duct, what is the mass flux? M dot double dash mass flux per unit area of this is in the left hand side is rho 1 u 1. Rho 1 is the unburnt uh, density, unburnt gas density reactant density and u1 is the speed at which it, uh, it approaches the flame and u2 rho 2 u2 is the burn side. So, that should be mass to be preserved. So, that is conserved. So, that is the first equation. Momentum p1 pressure plus rho 1 u1 square ok and dynamic uh, pressure should be equal to p2 plus rho 2 u2 square. So, this is simple. Energy, energy conservation we conserve the so, it is a steady flow as I told you steady propagation let us assume. So, in this case what happens uh, there is uh, we will also assume there is no uh, heat transfer external heat transfer ok. So, both are 0 q and w both are 0 you have m it is a steady flow. So, what is uh, mass coming in and going out are the same. So, m uh, m e h e uh, plus r maybe I will say 2 ok m 2 h 2 plus uh, v square v 2 square by 2. So, potential energy I neglect minus m 1 h 1 plus v 1 square by 2 ok. So, now this is the equation now m 1 dot will be equal to m 2 dot and left hand side is 0. So, I can write h 1 plus so here also you will say yeah h 1 plus half u 1 square that is the velocity square will be equal to h 2 plus half u 2 square. So, that will be energy conservation in simple terms. You may wonder uh, there is uh, combustion taking place here, why we are not able to take into account of that, that because the H will take care of that basically we will see that later. Then as I told you equation of state is important for this to uh, derive the property uh, like a density, we have to uh, based upon temperature and pressure we can uh, get the value of density. So, I am writing the equation of state in this form P equal to rho or T. So, these are the fundamental governing equations. Let us see how to extract some useful results from this. Okay. Now, first one is what we are going to uh, see is I will try to combine the uh, continuity equation and the uh, momentum equation that is uh, rho 1 u 1 equal to rho 2 u 2 p 1 plus rho 1 u 1 square equal to p 2 plus rho 2 u 2 square. Now, I combine this two I get p 1 minus p 2 is equal to m dot double dash square into 1 by rho 2 minus 1 by rho 1 ok. So, what I do I uh, substitute here uh, you rho 1 I know rho 1 u 1 equal to rho 2 u 2 I substitute here like this and I uh, I know that rho 2 u 2 minus rho 1 u 1 uh, that square. So, I can write this this is nothing but m dot double dash. So, m dot double dot square into uh, 1 by rho 2 minus 1 by rho 1. So, this equation when I say m dot double dot square is nothing but p 2 minus p 1 divided by 1 by rho 1 minus 1 by rho 2 I am writing like this. Uh, this is called the equation for Rayleigh line equation for Rayleigh line ok. So, from the same procedure we can evaluate the value of u 2 minus u 1. Okay. So, p 1 minus p 2 is equal to m dot double dash into u 2 minus u 1. So, from that we can just I am just keeping these equations which are handy in certain calculations. So, if you understand the equation number 5 is Rayleigh lines equation is very important for us. Okay. Now, uh, the expression for u 2 uh, u 2 minus u 1 is derived like this from the previous uh, here you can see that p 1 minus p 2 is this. I m dot double dash into u 2 minus u 1. So, u 2 minus u 1 will be equal to p 1 minus p 2 divided by m dot double dash. Now, 
P1 minus P2 is known to be this. So, using that I can write u2 minus u1 equal to m dot double dash into 1 by rho 2 minus 1 by rho 1. Okay, now, you can see uh, why I am doing this. I want to see the uh, magnitude of uh, this u2 minus u1. So, for detonation, see the table again, go back to the table, detonation rho 2 by rho 1 is 1.7 to 2.6, that is the range it varies. For uh, deflagration, it is very low, maximum is 0.25. For detonation, it is 1.7 to uh, that means rho 2 is greater than rho 1 for detonation. So, for detonation, rho 2 is greater than rho 1. For deflagration, for deflagration, rho 2 is less than rho 1. Okay. Now, what happens due to this? So, for when rho 2 is greater than rho 1, u2 minus u1 is negative for deflagration, it is a detonation. Okay. So, because you can say u2 minus u1 is this, when rho 2 is greater than rho 1, then uh, this will be negative. So, u2 minus u1 will be negative, m dot is cannot be negative, m dot should be positive. So, this is negative. So, now for deflagration, since rho 2 is less than rho 1, this u2 minus u1 is positive. So, that we have to understand. So, uh, now the expression for u2 square minus u1 square, which is going to be useful later, that is also derived using this same uh, phenomena. I'll, uh, what I do here is again uh, use the uh, momentum equation and uh, compare with continuity. And so, momentum and continuity are used to derive this. So, this is another important equation. So, now this equation and the energy equation if you use, energy equation is h1 plus uh, half u1 square equal to h2 plus half u2 square this equation and this equation u1 square minus u2 square if you use this then I get what is called Hugo new equation, Hugo new equation or relation. So, that is is this h2 minus h1. So, I, I am just writing the entire difference h2 minus h1 equal to half u1 square minus half u2 square. So, equal to half. Now, I know the value of this u1 square minus u2 square is p2 minus p1 into 1 by rho 2 plus 1 by rho 1. So, that I substitute here half times that. Okay. That will that will be this. Now, some assumptions have to be made now. So, what we make is perfect gas for a perfect gas constant see ideal gas can be perfect or semi perfect. Okay. When I say perfect, you linearly vary with temperature. So, for example, A plus B T or say H, okay, let us say H, H also vary like this for perfect gas, H will vary linearly. So, this means D H by D T equal to uh, C P equal to B and it is constant for the perfect gas. So, C P is constant for perfect gas, but semi perfect gas again there is no deviation, but H now is a function of temperature only, but it will vary like this, non linearly it will vary. So, this implies C p equal to d h by d t will be equal to b plus 2 c t. C p depends on temperature. Okay. Now, when I say constant specific heat, it will not vary with temperature. So, I take this as a perfect gas. Ideal gas can be perfect gas or semi perfect gas. So, I take perfect gas. Okay. So, the temperature uh, range it should surely be, it will vary, but uh, this is an assumption made when I do that and uh, additionally when I say molecule weight of the reactant and molecule weight of the product are almost the same. So, R 1 the specific gas constant of reactant and that of the product are almost the same. If that is the case, then I will write enthalpy like this. What is this? Enthalpy of the reactant H1 or unburnt reactant is sigma yi. Y1i means in the reactant stream. What are the 
mass fraction associated with the reactant stream Y1I or the reactant uh, region into the enthalpy of formation of that species added together plus this is the enthalpy of formation net enthalpy of formation. Now Cp this is Cp of the mixture mixture Cp into T1 minus T reference some reference temperature. So it, uh, it is the reactants are at the unburnt temperature of T1. So that may be not equal to T ref always if it is equal to T ref 290 this is 290 Kelvin if it is equal to this then this term will go to 0 only the entire formation has to be taken into account and the basically that will be for fuel alone for the, the reactant side because oxygen nitrogen are basic elements they will not have any heat of formation. So the products is same thing sigma y 2 i means whatever be the y i is in the stream of the burnt gases that into enthalpy formation of this so CO2, H2, etc. Similarly, Cp into T2 minus uh, T ref. So, T2 will be the temperature. If it is same as the uh, reference temperature, then that will term will be 0. So, now this is the expression for H2 and H, uh, H2 and H1, and uh, heat addition now comes into play by the standard heat addition. This is standard heat addition. When the reactants are at uh, 298 Kelvin, what is the formation enthalpy for that entire reaction mixture okay please understand that this h etc as a unit of uh, joule per kg mass based okay similarly so you have to convert so normally we get uh, the hf value in joule per kilo mole now you have to convert into joule per kg and use it here so that that in the uh, mixing process you use the mass fractions okay so now this is the this is the enthalpy of the enthalpy formation of the reactants and this enthalpy of the products the standard enthalpy of uh, uh, the products uh, added together. Now this difference will be the negative of standard heat of reaction. So what is standard heat of reaction? Enthalpy of the product standard uh, enthalpy of product minus the standard enthalpy of uh, reactants. Now here it is otherwise that is heat of combustion. So that is heat addition. So heat addition is this. So this term can be absorbed in heat addition. So uh, Q. So, Q will be added to this. So, Cp T1 plus Q plus half U1 square will be equal to Cp T2 plus half U2 square. That will be the energy equation. So, instead of writing in terms of uh, enthalpy, uh, when you write in terms of uh, T temperature and also recognizing that the enthalpy formation of the reactant and products uh, can be uh, combined to get the heat of uh, combustion that is heat addition Q. You can write the equation like this. So, when there is a chemical reaction the uh, heat is released the word which is nothing but the, uh, the difference between the enthalpies of the reactants and the products. So, that is uh, given out as uh, heat. Now, using the ideal gas equation of state okay, and writing the specific heat as a function of specific uh, gas constant the energy equation can be written like this okay okay so um, when you apply the ideal gas equation of state so uh, you have uh, p equal to rho or t okay so now t will be equal to p by rho r that is what i uh, i will first use so instead of t1 i will write p1 instead of t1 i will write p1 by rho 1 r now Cp minus sorry, minus Cv equal to R and uh, the ratio Cp by Cv equal to gamma. So, by combining this I can get Cp equal to gamma R by gamma minus 1. Okay, so, that is what I mean by saying writing specific heat as a function of specific uh, gas constant and gamma. So, this gamma is nothing but the ratio of specific heats at constant pressure and a uh, specific constant volume so that this ratio. So, using this two I can write this. So, I will write temperature as P by rho r and uh, Cp as gamma r by gamma minus 1. So, Cp gamma r by gamma minus 1 P1 by rho 1 r. So, now I have already I have assumed r 1 equal to r 2 uh, state 1 also it is r only because molecular weights are same. So, r is nothing but r u by molecular weight. Okay. Now, m1 is uh, approximately equal to m2. 
that is assumed. So, R1 will be equal to R2. Okay, molecule weight of the reactant and product almost the same. So, that is the assumption made. So, uh, when you do that, then Cp is written as gamma R by gamma minus 1, T is T1 is written as P1 by rho 1 R plus half U1 square plus Q, same thing in the right hand side, gamma R by gamma minus 1, P2 by rho 2 R plus half U2 square. So, now combine the terms and write this equation like this. Q equal to gamma by gamma minus 1 into P2 by rho 2 minus P1 by rho 1 minus half U1 square minus U2 square. So, that will be the uh, equation I arrive at by combining this. Now, this is called Ran rankine Huguenot equation Q, so equation 8, rankine Huguenot relation gamma by gamma minus 1 P2, I can also say 1 by rho is equal, equal to specific volume specific volume that also I can. So, I say P2 small v2 minus P1 small v1. Okay? So, specific volume also I can substitute here. So, minus half of P2 minus P1 into V1 plus V2. So, that will be the relationship. So, please understand that this is energy conservation uh, which is written in this term in this form by combining the useful uh, relations what we arrived by combining the mass and momentum. So, when you do any analysis, we have to take into account of both the rankine Figonio relation plus the Rayleigh line. Both should be obeyed. So, now Rayleigh line is this equation, this mass flux square. Uh, okay. This mass flux square equal to P2 minus P1 divided by V1 minus V2 or 1 minus rho 1 minus 1 minus rho 2. So, a small v1 minus small v2. So, this equation is the Rayleigh line equation and this is the rankine Hugonio equation where you can uh, see that uh, Q is expressed in terms of uh, pressure and uh, specific volumes or densities. Okay. Now, uh, when you fix the state 1, state 1 is any two properties are required. So, P1 and uh, V1, small V1 or 1 by rho 1. Where does take these two properties? I fix the state. Okay? Then Rayleigh lines can be drawn. Rayleigh lines only need the initial condition. So, for several v, uh, P2 and uh, rho 2s, I can draw the Rayleigh line. Okay? So, now this is the Rayleigh line. So, P versus 1 by rho or V. Correct? That is the Rayleigh line uh, coordinates in which you see that when I have different mass fluxes, fix the state, initial state P1, 1 by rho 1, this is fixed and uh, I can get, so that is this point P1 and 1 by rho 1. So, this point is fixed. Now, I can vary the, based upon the mass fluxes, I can vary this. So, what happens if the mass flux is 0, then I get this line, this line, this is corresponding to mass flux equal to 0. When the mass flux is infinity, very large, then I get this, very large, correct. So, in between I can have this, uh, this from horizontal to vertical, anywhere I can move this, it is not possible, so I can approach the vertical line. Similarly, mass flux 0 does not make any sense, so I can approach the horizontal line. So, in between somewhere here, this range I can operate this. That means, correct, this coordinate, the line cannot go and cross this vertical line and becomes like this. There is no solution. So, this is not possible. So, the solution in the A and B coordinate is not possible because it will be negative flux, correct. So, that is not possible for us. So, only it should be varying like this. The minimum is 0 and the maximum is tending to infinity. That is what we can have. And uh, these two coordinates, we can say that the quadrants labeled A and B are physically inaccessible. Okay? So, Rayleigh line, the in increasing mass flux is in increasing the slope, obviously. Uh, in the limit of infinite mass flux, Rayleigh line would be vertical and in the opposing limit of zero mass flux, it will be horizontal. These are the two dashed lines which are drawn, vertical and horizontal dashed lines. Okay? And, uh, 
in between the MOSFETs can vary so that we always have a slope uh, line drawn only in this direction. The opposite direction line cannot be drawn. That means the line cannot cross the vertical and go to the other side. And this type of line is not possible. So, because of the negative flux, it will, it will incur negative flux which is not correct. So, quadrants labeled A and B are physically inaccessible. That this has to be obeyed. So, when you draw the um, Rayleigh line, you understand that these two coordinates are not going to be useful. And uh, possible Rayleigh lines I can draw in these two coordinates by varying the mass flux for a given initial condition. By varying the mass flux, I can draw several Rayleigh lines only in, the, in this range, a typical range, correct? Not crossing the vertical and horizontal lines. That is what I can do. Now, Rankin, you are going to what you only draw that is this. So, again we will say P versus V, this is 1 by rho, okay? P versus V, but please understand that this uh, Huguenio curve, you have to uh, consult the Rayleigh line to draw this, okay? So, for example, uh, the curve will look like this, this is the curve, but all these sectors of the curve will not be feasible for us to access. Obviously, you know this is the maximum mass flux, uh, this will be the minimum mass flux that we can have as seen in the Rayleigh line, okay? Now, that means any portion in this curve here where Rayleigh line cannot be drawn, I cannot access this. That is impossible. So, point between B and C is not accessible since Rayleigh line cannot be drawn. So, continuity, Rayleigh line is basically the uh, continuity equation and uh, momentum equation obeyed. No, that, that should be obeyed energy equation should all these three are coupled. So, when the Rayleigh line cannot operate in a particular portion, this uh, you cannot cover, cannot also uh, operate there. So, B and C is inaccessible. So, that is ruled out. Then what you do is, you take a flux. Now, and uh, now if you cross this, no, there is no meaning for us. So, when you take a line, Rayleigh line, this is a typical Rayleigh line, which is feasible, possible Rayleigh line. I take and I draw this and uh, draw this line as a tangent to this Huguenot. So, please understand when I draw this Huguenot curve, Huguenot curve, I fix P1, V1 as I fix in the Rayleigh line and also I fix the Q. Q is fixed. Now, this curve will vary when P1, V1 or Q varies, correct? So, let us fix these three first, P1, V1 and Q1. So, I get a particular curve. Now, uh, fix the mass flow rate so that I get a Rayleigh line given like this. So, now that becomes that forms a tangent at the point D on the Huguenot. Okay. So, we can see that this Rayleigh line, particular Rayleigh line forms a uh, tangent at this point of the Huguenot curve and at this point is called D. Okay. So, this point is called D that you understand. This will again uh, divide this into region. So, we have a region now B D and a region above D. Similarly, I choose uh, another uh, Rayleigh line here, another Rayleigh line here I choose so that it uh, becomes tangent here at D. So, this is another Rayleigh line. So, another difference See, this is m, m dot uh, double dash x, say uh, double dot 1, this may be m dot double dot 2. So, you get another Rayleigh line here. This Rayleigh line forms tangent to uh, the Huguenot curve at the point E. So, now you have an accessible region C to E and I can also access the curve above D. So, the curve Huguenot curve can be accessed above D in between B and D and uh, between C, C and E and below E. These are the four regions I can access. The region between B and C cannot be accessed because there is no Rayleigh line possible there. Okay. So, Huguenot curve is a plot of all possible values of uh, V2 and P2 for given Q and P1, V1. Okay. Now, points between B and C is not accessible because no Rayleigh line can be drawn there. Above point D, okay, we say strong detonation occurs, but the velocity of the burnt gas will be subsonic. Strong return occurs. The incoming velocity will be supersonic, but the, uh, after the wave propagates, the burnt region, the velocity will be subsonic. 
B to D you would get weak detonation, weak detonation and uh, supersonic V2. Okay, we will see about that. Then uh, C to E will get weak uh, deflagration, okay, subsonic V2 obviously and uh, strong deflagration and supersonic V2 is uh, possible here. Please understand that that means uh, practically in lab scale we can only get B to D here and uh, this. These are the two possible regimes. About D is not practically attainable. Similarly, supersonic V2 deflect, strong deflagration is not achievable. So, these are the things. But uh, theoretically, these the below E region or above D region are possible, but practically we cannot uh, get that. Okay. So, this is about Huguenot. So, this curve, uh, this equation, this is plotted with the equation 8 and uh, this Rayleigh line is plotted with the equation 5. 